In order to understand this passage, our two brothers, John and William, have made their way up onto Dartmoor to go to Scorrell, a stone circle, where they hope to sell their souls to the devil in order to avoid the plague. They both know they're infected with the plague and this is their only strategy to survive. You are here because you do not wish to die, says the voice that I heard at the cathedral. Did you hear that? says William. The voice continues. What you ask, I cannot give. It is not for me to grant any soul a longer life. After this night, you have but six days more to live. Nothing can alter that. But as you surely trusted me by coming here, John of Raymond, so I will trust you. You will see what no living man has seen. In Christ's name, says William, who is that? The choice is yours, John, says the voice. You may stay here and return to your house and spend the last six days with your wife and children. Or you may put yourself in my hands now. I will wipe the scars from your face and the swellings from your body. I will extinguish your fever. I will let you live your last six days in the distance of the future. Ninety-nine years shall pass before you will return to live the first of your remaining days. Another ninety-nine years will pass before the second. Five hundred and ninety-five years will pass before your sixth and final day, when I will come for you. Time suddenly seems an unnecessary thing. A whole lifetime is like a single rosebud on a bush. I see many lives blossoming and their petals unfurling and falling. And it doesn't matter how fast they come and go, whether suddenly or slowly. All that matters is that they are there. I'll remain here, says William. I do not fear my fate. I will die here, where I belong. Six days, I say, unable to think of anything but Catherine and my sons. Six days, and if I return home, I will take this disease with me. Slowly, I get to my feet, still shivering. Goodbye, William, I say, reaching out and touching him. I kneel down and embrace him. I hold him tight, not just as a brother, but as the last friend I will ever know. I feel sick with sorrow as well as the plague. The tears running down my cheeks are cold in the wind. Ah, by the Lord's balls and breeches, I cannot do it, says William. I'll not be parted from you. I'll go with you, John. I let go of him. The wind dies down. There is starlight above us, just two or three clouds, visible in the night sky. Where's the moon? I ask. He must have set. So suddenly? How do you feel? I rub my hands along my sleeves. My clothes are drenched and my feet are cold, but I no longer feel feverish. So what just happened? There was a voice. It called me by my name. Do you think we are still suffering the disease? I don't know. There is a long pause. Do you think that was truly our mother's voice, the singing? William asks. It sounded like her. Perhaps her spirit came to save us, or to lure us in. The voice that spoke to us sounded like my own. That's strange, replies William. I thought it sounded like mine.